All right, good morning. I'm Aaron Heiser of Makers Leather Supply, and we're going to start, finally, uh, putting together the Lux handbag. Um, if you watched, I uh, did a video that's kind of optional in the putting together process, because if you're tooling it and dyeing it and stuff like that, then okay, I did the, the dyeing video on it. I did not do a, a tooling video on it, um, because that would be a whole series of videos. Um, so anyway, I, I dyed all the pieces blue and then I left all the tooling natural. Um, here's the main tooled piece to show you. So yeah, um, just a little bit about this handbag. This is more of a, 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 a like a designer style handbag. I really wanted to do something nice and it's going to be nice once we finally get it together. But it's we're a long way from there right this minute. Um, this bag has a more complicated design than many of the ones I've done before. Um, that being said, it's not hard to make. Not at all. It was hard to design, but it's not hard to build. Um, but there are a lot of times where, you know, a lot of the time you're putting something together and you, you do all your tooling, you do all your dyeing, you do all your assembly, and then you burnish the edges, and then you're done. Well, there's going to be steps to all of this because a lot of these individual pieces need to be um, lined and then burnished and then assembled in that order. And then you go and, you know, then that becomes part of a larger piece, which, you know, so on and so forth. So, I am going to hand sew 80% of this purse. Now, I'm not going to lie, there are some stitches that I'll run through the machine really quick because they're not going to be seen. Um, so, for instance, uh, it'll have a reverse gusset in it where the reverse gusset goes into the end gusset pieces where those two are um, together. The, it, it, there's no reason to hand sew that um, if I have a machine available to me just because no one will ever see those stitches. Okay? Um, so, for speed's sake, I'm going to machine sew a very few things. Um, but I'm going to hand sew 90% of this purse because I want you to know that you don't have to have a sewing machine to make it. Um, the pieces, again, that I'm not going to hand sew, it's just for the sake of speed and to, um, you know, be able to, to get the, the build along videos done um, faster. Uh, so yeah, because otherwise, you know, hand stitching does take time. I really enjoy hand stitching, but not when I'm trying to get something done to get a get a video processed or whatever like that okay so um the very first thing i need to do now that all my pieces are, are dyed and the color i want and this isn't all the pieces um there's still some pieces like handles they're not even part of the pattern because we're going to create them together um and we'll talk about different types of handles things like that maybe it's own video i hadn't decided yet but there's no handles on the pattern okay i know i'm sorry um, but this one's really going to, it's going to be a make you think type project. It's going to uh, hopefully, um, hopefully it'll be a lot of fun. Hopefully it'll teach some folks some things or if they already, if you already know everything there is to know, then it's probably going to annoy the hell out of you. Sorry. So <laughs> anyway, here we go. Um, first thing we're going to do right now is we're going to start lining some of these pieces so that we can burnish their edges and then sew them onto the project, okay? So, um, the pieces I need to line right now are these two zippered gusset pieces, okay? Um, and I'm going to line these with like an English bridle. This is our imported English bridle. It's just a tan. Um, you could use anything to line these. Um, I'm choosing this because it burnishes well. Um, the alternative, if you're using a chrome tan type leather, would be edge painting, and I don't want to edge paint this purse. Just my, there's no reason not to, other than I'm lazy and I don't want to. If you do edge painting, it takes way longer than burnishing, if you do it correctly. So anyway, I'm gonna set that aside. And what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna take, um, so those were the, the zipper pieces. Here are my four end gusset pieces, and then there's my flat piece. All of these pieces need to be lined, okay? So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna get an ink pen. I'm gonna lay out these pieces on the back of my bridle here, okay, in a manner that I know they'll all fit on it. 
and I was pretty liberal when I cut it out. I, I left lots of extra space, so it shouldn't be a problem getting them to fit on it. But I also like to conserve leather, so I do it this way and conserve glue. There we go. And what I'm left down there with is enough to make a couple of wallet pockets. So there we go. All right, so I'm going to take an ink pen and um, just trace around all that stuff so that I'll know where to put my glue. Okay. The glue I'm going to use, I'm just very roughly tracing around it, much larger than the actual piece, because I want to, you know, when I go to lay this down to stick the pieces together, I don't want to have to fit right inside certain dimensions or whatever. I want lots of coverage. going to use my water-based contact cement. I've been having a lot of fun with that uh, here lately, playing with it. Um, I find that it is a great product and I really do enjoy using it. That's not a sales pitch, that's a it's great glue pitch. <laughs> um, also I can reuse, I can use this little reusable spreader, sure it makes it nice. It's a silicone spreader so I can just spread evenly and nicely and get it everywhere. I do try not to let it go over the edge of the leather because then I got to sand that off which I mean, I'm gonna have to do a lot of sanding anyway but you know the less I have to do then the better off we will we'll be um, the water-based contact cement works really well um, with super thin coats because then they dry a lot faster okay this stuff is white when it is ready to stick together it is clear that shows that it's dried enough that you can stick your pieces together um, if you're using the solvent base, you know, the standard contact cement, that is great stuff. I love it. Um, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying that now that I like this stuff, I'm going to quit using solvent based contact cement. But I am saying that right now there's none of it in my office, so guess what? Water based it is. <laughs> um, the issue with the water based is, though, that, you know, it does take longer to set up. My solvent based contact cement that I use only takes three to five minutes to set up and things are ready to stick together when with this stuff it takes more like five ten fifteen minutes just depends on how thick it goes on uh, again the thinner you can put it on then the better off you're going to be Ooh, like that. Um, we have had a lot of like this is a new product for us this water-based contact cement and i've had a lot of folks have uh given us some pretty pretty good feedback on it so I'm excited about it. Love it when you choose a, pro a new product and it actually works out and makes people happy, as opposed to the exact opposite, <laughs> which can happen. All right. This little spreader, like I said, it's real nice because. You can get a glop of it and then you can just move that glop all around and get nice thin coverage. And like I said, thin is what I want because then it'll dry a lot faster. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the video because i got a lot more glue to spread here. And uh, I'll just sit here and spread glue until I've got all these ready. And when I come back, they'll have, been, they'll have dried to the point that they, uh, the glue is clear and they'll be ready to stick. Okay? Alright. So my glue is dry to the point that it's clear. Okay? Still a couple of little white spots here and there, but for the most part it's clear. That's good enough. I did cut this larger piece in half just so that it would be easier to set all these um, 
these pieces on it and uh, stay on camera. So anyway, now I'm just going to line everything up and stick it down really, really well. Okay, and then I'm going to get my little rolling tool and I'm going to roll across it just to make sure that it's good and stuck. I think that's a German word, good and stuck. Maybe Polish. I don't know. <laughs> So there's those three. There's my normal roller. That's a huge one. Guess I'll use this massive one. I'm not sure where mine walked off to, as usual. But this one does have the classic squeak. It's not the nice one we sell in the store over there. <laughs> one of the samples we went through when we decided which one to buy. So those three pieces are good. Slide them to the side here. That. And that. Also this water-based contact cement, if it gets somewhere it shouldn't be, it seems a little easier to clean off than the uh, solvent based. Um, don't get me wrong, both of them, if you catch them at just the right time, you can clean them off. But the solvent based one is a little bit more difficult to catch at that exact right moment. Alright, so there's two sets of those. Set those to the side. Now these big long pieces might be tricky, so we'll see if I can do this without cussing too much. got glue on the back of it here so we're going to see if we can roll it off a little bit I have not applied any kind of a sealant to this yet and uh, I probably should have um, what I'm going to use on it though is leather balm with atom wax because I like it because it's really soft and uh, leaves it kind of buttery and nice um, it's just a really nice finish So here we are, um, sticking down this other one here. And again, I'm going to roll and roll. All right, and then the next thing I'm going to do is just take my very, very sharp knife and run right down the edges and um, go ahead and... Uh, cut them out of the lining. It's much easier to do it this way than it is to try to cut a lining that's the same shape and size as the as the main part and then try to line them up perfectly. This way I'll still have very nice uh, straight edges on them and everything and, and it'll work out. So when we come back I will have done that to all of these pieces and cut them out individually and then we'll talk about all the burnishing that needs to happen on these specific pieces. Alright, now the fun part. Okay, all these pieces are glued together and then also I took all of them after I had cut them out, turned them over, I used a hammer um, or you can use a roller, but again my small roller that I can really get some good pressure in certain places is, uh, is not in here right now. So I took this hammer and just walked around the edges making sure that those edges are really good and sealed together because that will help me have a better um, burnished edge once I get to that point. Okay, so next thing I need to do is, um, well, first off, if your edges aren't nice and flat and you had some rough spots where you cut, you may want to sand them. Okay, I've, I've done plenty of videos on showing that. But the next thing I need to do is I need to run an edger around all those pieces that I just uh, just did that with. Okay, um, but these pieces, these, these end gusset pieces, the only parts I'm going to burnish are these rounded edges right here and then these angled edges the tops Oops, sorry um, these angled get up where you can see so the bottom of them is squared the top of them is kind of angled up okay so I need to do the up angled edge and I need to do the rounded edge all right so I'll show you on just one what that's going to look like 
So I'm going to take my edger and just barely round off those uh, edges. This is a uh, Berry King grooved edger number one. Okay, I'm not trying to take a ton off. I just want to round those edges just a little bit. I used to think that I had to have a completely round edge on things. And um, basically, I was just ruining a lot of projects. Um, you just really kind of need to knock those corners off, and that's it. All right. So, there we go. So, I did that top edge right there where, like I said, it kind of angles up a little bit. Did the rounded edge now again if you got glue all over it or those those pieces don't line up really nicely um, you may want to hit it with a sander but i am going to dye and burnish that edge okay so i got me some coconut here got me a little piece of canvas i've got my navy blue dye which is the color of dye that i used when i when i airbrushed all this stuff and then i've got me a dauber um, i've shown this trick a million times i'm going to show it again we're going to burn the dauber I really wish I could find a lighter, but all I seem to have are some matches. All my lighters disappear, which is funny because Janie doesn't smoke anymore. <laughs> Get a big match. All right, take match. Get it burning good. And I'm gonna burn my dauber. Okay, and I wanna burn it until it's little and there's not big old fuzzies sticking off of it. Okay. So burn, 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 dauber. There we go. See how it is now? It's little, and um, it's really crusty. So what I have to do now is I have to hold it over my trash can and just knock all those crusties off with my finger. It, it comes right off. Okay, and then you've got a nice squared away little dauber that doesn't have big fuzzies all over it. Smaller, easier to maintain. All right. Take my navy blue dye it on there and I'm going to use the edge of my dye container to kind of get the excess off and I'm just going to run a real quick bead of dye down that edge to make sure that it's blue when I burnish it see um, now I'm going to do this to all these pieces but I'm just doing one to show you okay so now that piece is blue you can use die markers and things like that also on your edges. Um, it's a little bit easier to maintain than a dauber. I've been doing a dauber for years and I'm, I'm pretty good in practice with it. Um, so yeah. go. I'm going to wipe that excess off my finger on a paper towel here. I like to let it set on there for just a few seconds before I start burnishing. It seems to work a little bit better. Make sure it's on all the edges. All right, and then I'm going to burnish. I'm going to rub briskly with my uh, piece of canvas here. And when I'm done, it'll be a very nice edge that it'll look like one piece of leather, not two pieces of leather glued together. If it doesn't look like two, one piece of leather, then you need to sand it a little bit and then do all those steps again. Okay. And when I think it's burnished, I turn it over and use a different part of my canvas and keep burnishing and it'll get even better. Tokenol is an amazing thing. It burnishes a lot of different leathers. I really like this stuff. That little can may be $9, but it lasts a long time and it does an amazing job. Okay. So, there we are. Nice, burnished, smooth edges. Not that edge. This edge. <laughs> okay. So, I'm going to do that to all of these. Um, and then also, I cut out... These are my little handle holders. Okay, they're on the pattern. Um, you need four of them. I cut them out and I'm gonna do the same to them, but they don't have a liner and that's fine, but I need to, to uh, round the edges and burnish them and make sure the edges are blue um, because they sew directly to the side of the bag and uh, they're gonna be part of the earlier steps of the, the bag making also. All right, so there's all that. 
Um, I'm going to cut this video off right there for now because people have been waiting on this video for a while and I want them to uh, be able to see that it is coming and we are doing this. Um, this whole project is probably going to be three or four videos. Um, but yeah, for now that's, that's a couple hours worth of work right there. So until next time, I'm Aaron Heiser of Maker's Leather Supply and uh, this has been the Lux Handbag, part one of the build, um, part two if you watch the, uh, all the coloring of it. So talk to you soon. Have a great day.